Hi everybody, Eugene here with Darkroom Software. In this video, we are gonna be covering Darkroom Core Template Basics. So this is to help build a foundation, specifically for new users. So when they build their templates, they can be exciting, but there are a lot of things you can do that you might regret later down the road and some things that might help you build and design just a little bit more quickly. So if you're brand new to Core or you're kind of uneasy with building templates, this is the perfect video for you. Let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Darkroom Core. And first thing we're gonna cover over is what is a template? Um, a lot of people will use the word interchangeably with a border. Now, a, a template can be a border, it can have a border. Um, this would be an example of just kind of a simple template. This is one that comes with the software. Um, it can also have uh, oops, a, oops. Okay, so here we are in Darkroom Core Edition 9.3. First thing we want to discuss is what is a template. So a lot of people will use the word interchangeably with a border. Um, I have a um, an image right here. It has a border around it. This is a template. It's used. Uh, this was made using a template. Um, you might also have a a template with some text on it, maybe some uh, smart text. This here would automatically update with today's date uh, QR code. So uh, this one right here is an album page uh, for a six by eight album. This is also a template, even though it doesn't even have an image in it. We're uh, printing out and this would be a link to the image. So you take a picture, it automatically prints and creates a QR code. And a couple more examples. You can see it actually updated with that. Uh, QR codes updating with the image. So here's one more example. This is a template used for a specialty product, um, a keychain where this would be printed and then cut in half down the center by the printer and then folded and stuck into a keychain. That's why uh, the pictures are reversed. And last example is a green screen uh, template. This was shot on a, a blue screen um, and it's not chroma key blue so you can see that it's not the best knockout because they're already wearing blue outfits on uh, blue background. But this is a green screen template or a chroma key template. So those are different things that you can kind of do with the template. And we're going to go over some of those, um, just kind of the basics. And I have additional videos that go a little bit more in depth into uh, the more specialized ones like the QR code. But we're just going to learn the basics in this one. So let's jump over to the setup tab and see how we would create these templates. So um, first thing that's a good idea is to go to the sample borders and look and see how those are made. These are just simple templates with uh, a bit of text. The, um, there's the borders. The sports are a good uh, example of how to do and organize your graphics properly. So let's open one of these up. And you can see we have this graphic right here and you'll see that it's saved right next to the template. This, that's the path where the um, graphic is stored. And we're gonna talk about this in just a second, but I just wanna give you kind of a understanding so you can see where the template's stored. The CRD file is the template, and then uh, the PNG or JPEG is gonna be your graphic. And we're gonna add some in just a second. But it's a good idea to look at these, see how they're built, and they'll give you good examples. That's what they're there for. Um, this one right here, the Smart Memory Mate, um, is uh, a little bit more complicated. It's worth looking into if you're into a little bit more advanced things like 
auto filling. So we are going to switch into my templates. I like to label it my templates when I create a brand new group. Um, I click new group and then I know those are templates that I made. If you create a lot of templates, it's a good idea to have, let's say, wedding templates and Christmas templates and organize them like that. But just to get started off with, my templates is a good thing. And what we're going to do is work when we create a template. I'm going to create a new group under my templates. Demo templates. And I'm going to copy that name because I want to go into my X drive. Now, this is not required, but it's highly recommended. Uh, I'm going to go into my X drive and then my templates folder and then borders and under my templates, that's a folder that I created. I'm going to add a new folder to match my demo templates. So any graphics that I'm going to use, I'm going to also store them there and that's also where my templates are going to be stored. Um, this is helpful when you're moving to a new computer. Everything's always going to be relative to X. If you add graphics and save templates outside of your X drive, let's say your C drive, or, or let's say your desktop. Your desktop is, we'll look at mine. Um, my desktop folder is actually under my users folder. So you can see that my user folder is Eugene. If I get a new computer and that user folder is now owner, that path is broken. So that's really helpful, uh, or it is really helpful to save your templates in your X drive because it's always going to be called X. And that's a virtual drive, just in case anybody's missing. That's a virtual drive that's created when the software is running. When the software is closed, it is uh, not available, but the software creates that drive. Okay, so I got my demo templates. Let's create our first template. It will be a four by six um, All in this case, it's uh, it's just going to be a four by six with an image object in it, and that's it. Just so we can see how just the basics, how things are saved, um, and just for fun, we'll set the background color to we can go better than that blue. Okay, and so that's our background. This is if I save it, it is a template even though it does not have a photo object, but that would be the next thing you would typically add. Photo, photo one, it automatically takes up the whole screen, but let's say I want it to just be a border. I can use my scroll wheel to zoom out to make that image box just a little bit smaller. Now, one thing you'll notice is that is this is not an even border. Um, I have the ability to double click on the object and type in specific coordinates based on pixels. So let's say I want it to be a, uh, let's say a 50 pixel border. So that's moving the X, Y coordinate to right here, 50 pixels. And then doing a little bit of math, I know that this would be 1100. And that's because these, this number plus these two numbers have to equal to 1200, which is a, a short end on a four by six. And then this one should be 1700 or because this and plus this um, times two, this times two, because you have to, to the, the Y position plus the box uh, and then additional on the bottom. So you can essentially, if you're making a border, count these as one, two, and then three, one, two, and three. Um, but we'll double check that looks to be an even border so that's not something you have to worry about going in size and position unless you want to be very precise and make sure um, it is okay to kind of just guess and get it as close as you can to and if that's okay for you if that's good enough for you then it's good enough for me so that is our template I'm gonna go ahead and save it as a new border 
and make sure I save it under my demo templates folder. Save. So the next thing we're going to do is, now that we have a very basic understanding of templates, building templates, we're going to add some text. I'm going to click add and um, we'll just call this demo event 2023. And that text looks good to me. I'm going to, let's change the color. Well, I don't know why I keep wanting to choose green. Um, but we'll go with that. And here, uh, there's quite a few options. We're gonna draw an outline around the text. I think that should probably be white and a shadow. And then we'll kind of look at it. That outline looks a little bit big for me. Um, so we'll just adjust that to, let's say three. Okay, now we've added text. We can either save this as a new border or save changes, which would save over the original. The original wasn't that great, so I'm okay with saving over um, as uh, saving changes. In the next tem template, we will um, save uh, as a new one. So next thing I wanna do is, let's say I wanted to add a date for that template. Um, and I want to print the date right here. I can click add text, um, insert special text, date and time, and then we'll go with a short and maybe something a little bit uh, Oswald um, and that's just to, so it doesn't stand out as much um, and we'll turn those two off so automatically the daily event it's going to update so if I make it a, uh, a week before whenever I use this at the event um, it will be the correct date. If I wanted to, um, instead of using the date option, I could have just typed it in, but this will automatically update. So that's helpful information. One other small thing that I'm gonna do um, is put that right there. We're gonna add the file name. So add text again and insert file and we'll go with file name short so it doesn't add the extension dot G, uh, jpg um, but we'll go even smaller now because this is not really important this is more for um, our information if somebody needed a reprint this is where this would be helpful so we can put it and hide it inside the actual photo image uh, box so go with black Go as small as we can, and we could probably even change it to a uh, a thinner font as well. Okay, so there's our template. I said we're gonna save it as a new template, so we want to give it a new name. Um, so it's four by six simple with date. Um, we're just being descriptive. You can be as descriptive as you want. I typically will label the size first and then the orientation at the very end. Orientation can come in handy if you have a vertical template and a horizontal template. It'll automatically choose the right template if you have the same file name with uh, VERT or HORZ at the end. Um, so that's helpful. There's a video that goes over specifically doing that. That's the reason why I always do a size at the beginning, orientation at the end. Save as new, and now we have two templates that are very similar. One has the date and time, the other one, or date and uh, file name, and the other one does not. So we'll switch over to 
our photo workshop and kind of see what we get whenever we select those templates. So you can use the shortcut key B to bring up uh, your templates. And we're gonna go to my templates and then demo templates. And this one has the file name. So we can see that we have our border, we have our date, the text that we added with the outline and shadow. And then right here is that file name. Um, the file name could probably be even smaller. Um, if we switch to something that doesn't have a solid surface, that file name should kind of hide just a little bit more as, as you have texture. So the idea is that file name is kind of hidden. Um, and if you need to find the file, it's hidden in the image. Okay. So let's switch back to our uh, template and we're going to create a brand new template and this time we're going to focus more on adding graphics. So there's typically two type of graphics that you're going to be adding. One of them is going to be a PNG and the other one is going to be a JPEG. The JPEG is going to be used as a background. Uh, it cannot have transparency versus a PNG has, uh, you can see through it. Part of it so we will do um, uh, four by six I think golden and in this case the page color doesn't matter because it's going to be covered but first we're going to add our photo it's going to take up the full image and then next we're going to add our graphic and earlier I said it's really important that the graphics that you save are saved with the template. It makes it much easier in the future. So that's what we're going to do. Before we actually go browsing for that template, we are going to go to our X drive, templates, orders, my templates, and demo templates where we are saving our other two templates. You can see there is the CRD files, the EDP files, or um, preview files. That's what the thumbnail that you see. So those aren't really that important. I can delete them. They'll regenerate. It's the CRD that's the actual template file. So these are the graphics that we're going to be working with today. And I'm going to just copy them into that folder. Okay. And we can close. We'll go ahead and leave that folder open just in case. Um, so first thing we're going to do is click add graphic, browse, and make sure we're looking inside the correct folder. And it's basing the, the, the folder it's looking in off of the template that we've previously created. So it found that graphic real quick and that's helpful. So here is a graphic border that outlines the whole image. It has graphic text. So I don't have to go in and add any of my text. This would be built in Photoshop. But the important thing to hear is that it's a, because it's a PNG file, you can see through the graphic. If we double click on it and go to transparency, we can see that use alpha channel um, is selected. Uh, one more small thing that a lot of people forget is the image goes all the way to the edge versus this border covers over quite a bit of the edge. So you might run to issues where people are getting um, chopped off a little bit. It's a good idea to go back in and just snug those edges up just a little bit so that you're not losing too much of the image. So that is our four by six golden template with uh, a PNG graphic overlay. We'll save it as new template. Next thing we're going to look at is a adding a logo. Maybe we should have done the uh, those um, reversed, but very specifically, I wanted you to see that the idea of transparency, you have a hole that you can see through. So a logo file would typically have uh, transparency as well.
even though we can't actually see the background, I'm still changing it to white. That'll just uh, bug me, letting me know that that color's back there, even though it's not really there. Okay, so we're gonna add our photo once again. It takes up the entire image. In this case, we are going to add a logo right here. So add graphic. We don't have to move those graphics because I've already copied all of them into that folder. And there is our logo. And just for fun, we are going to change that up. And I'm going to show you some options that if you need to edit a template, it's going to be helpful. So we've uh, been making horizontal templates. Let's make a vertical one. All we have to do is switch to and let's change the size as well. Five by seven vertical. Click OK. Whoops. I changed the name to 5x7, but I did not change the size. So we set the size and the orientation. 5x7. Uh, there we go. So I can remove this photo object and re-add it, and it would take the, up the entire space. Or I can use right-click and fill entire page and move my graphic right there, size it. I'm using my scroll wheel to size it. Um, do the, I do the same thing for this. Um, but because I just changed it, I know it's not the edge, I'm going to go fit and fill the entire page because I don't want too much of the image going off the outside. So there is our 4x6 vertical template with a logo. We're going to save as a new border. And uh, we're moving right along. Next up would be um, it, very similar. Um, 4x6, horizontal, um, uh, okay, so 4x6, horizontal, um, add our photo, and our graphic and the main reason I want to show you this one is that um, there you can add text with darkroom just by clicking typing in text and we have some editing abilities to stylize the text but a lot of times it's easier or it, um, your options are much greater whenever you design something in Photoshop so um, here is a a bit of text it was uh, AI generated with uh, Adobe Photoshop or I'm not sure exactly how I did it is a while back but Earth Day 2023 um, and then if you wanted to add a border around it but the main thing is I wanted to show you that um, there are times that you do want to go into Photoshop to generate uh, certain styles not everything can be done in darkroom um, and this is, would be a pretty good example. Okay, um, save this new border. Let's see what else do we have. I think there's a... Yeah, we got memory mate and a green screen template up next. Okay, so we talked a little bit earlier about PNGs versus... Uh, um, versus JPEGs. A JPEG is not going to have transparency. So we're going with the same steps of four by six. Um, GS one for green screen one. Um, you should probably be a little bit more thoughtful about how you name your templates because you have to then go use those to find you may have to use those to find them um, the actual template so um, but this is just for demo purposes okay so here we're actually not going to start off with a photo object because the photo object goes on top of the background so we're going to click add graphic browse and now we can select our um, I think it's four by six 
Uh, it might be a, a little bit smaller than a 4x6, but I'm going to just go all the way to the edge with it. Um, this is our JPEG background, and because it's going behind the image, we don't want to have anything cut out or anything like that. Um, I'll show you an example where you can have green screen and a PNG, and they're sandwiched with the image in, the, the, in between in just a moment. But next up, we're going to add our photo. And we're going to select chroma key, green screen, blue screen. And that template's ready to go. Um, we're going to save as new border. And I'm going to just show you that example I was talking about just a little bit earlier. It was one of the images that, um, that I had as a sample. So we have a background graphic, a green screen object, and a foreground PNG or overlay file. Um, same thing here. It's a good idea to look at the sample templates because they can give you a lot of um, ideas on how to build. So it's been a while since we've tested out our work. So we're gonna switch back over to Photo Workshop and we remember that our shortcut key is B to bring up our border chooser. Um, let's see. There's our Earth Day template. But what we want to test out is a green screen. Let's see. Yeah, I got Batman and Spider Man over here. So there's our green screen template. And there is Spider Man at the beach. Um, I have a. A vertical version so we can actually have him standing on the beach right there so that is our green screen template let's switch back to the setup tab and we're almost there guys uh, we're gonna click on my templates demo templates and we're gonna talk about a multi-image template and we're gonna use all these different things that we've learned um, all in one but we're going to create a memory mate for a soccer team and for those of you that uh, are not parents a memory mate would be used for um, it would have a team photo and then an individual photo or it might just have an individual a lot of different photographers use it a little bit differently but uh, we're going to make one that has a individual and a team photo so we click new and this is going to be a biggie it's going to be an 8 by 10 um, 8 by 10 made. so we have a few users that will are using darkroom to build very 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 large prints uh, 24 by 36 sizes um, 8 by 10 darkroom candle no problem but once you start getting past 16 by 24 or 20 by 30 um, I typically recommend dropping the resolution down just a little bit the larger the print the actual uh, lower the resolution be because you're viewing at a further distance um, most people can't see the difference under 220 dpi uh, so we just use 300 as a standard but if you're printing a large real large print 24 by 36 or higher um try dropping the resolution down 20 and you'll see that process is uh, quite a bit better uh, okay um vertical and add graphic we have a flame and soccer ball it's not an 8 by 10 but um whenever you add a graphic if the resolution is correct it will size uh, match up perfectly in this case this is a lower resolution image from its AI generated but uh, it's just a little bit lower resolution um, so this might not be the best candidate but for a preview it works just fine um, so next we're gonna add our photo and we didn't talk about this earlier but you can also use a predefined mask here we go. 
let's uh, we'll put it right there. And it definitely needs a frame and drop shadow just for fun. We can go a little bit wider on that frame. Okay. And then we will do the same thing for our team photo. Um, add photo. This is going to be photo number two. This is what allows you to drop one image in one place and another in, in the second place. Let's say you were making a template uh, like earlier we had the keychain. Um, you can leave it as photo one and then duplicate. So it's photo one, photo one. Whenever you drop one image into one box, it will duplicate and fill, auto fill the other box. But uh, for this, we want two different images. And what we're going to do is predefined mask and use a rounded rectangle. And then frame and drop shadow just so it kind of matches a little bit. And there's our team photo. It's kind of important to get this so it, uh, it is centered. So I can go in and do the math that we did earlier. It's a lot easier just to go and then uh, center horizontally. Now we know that the spaces are equal. Um, and we'll just click add text and add a team name. Uh, Call them the fireballs, I guess. <laughs> so uh, let's uh, find a cool font that works well. And that text is way too small, so we'll double click on it and we'll go with 150 and see how that looks. Centered, it can probably be white. And we'll add a drop shadow just so it's we're able to see it on the background because when we add image in there um, there might be a little bit of white it makes it hard to read so yeah 150 was way too um, too big but I can use my scroll wheel to make it a little bit smaller there we go we got the whole thing in okay and we'll put that right there and Let's do the same thing center horizontally just so it's matching up. We'll move that up just a little bit and um, I think that's good for a memory memory mate. We have our uh, individual, our team, our team name. If we wanted to add the league information, our uh, division or anything like that, we can add that there. Um, One other thing I'm going to show you real quick, um, just for fun. We didn't go over effects, and I kind of thought that's a little bit more advanced uh, than what we cover here. But um, I'm going to just this is just extra bonus. Um, we're going to do a black and white effect, and just see how this turns out with well, grayscale and no uh, mask. So that goes over everything. And then we're going to add one more effect and then um, we will set that to color and now is a good opportunity to add that green in. Okay, something like a green. Okay, that goes on top. It is too opaque. That should be set to, let's say, 50%. It's probably still too much. Um, go with 80 percent okay and then we can make this color editable in our workshop so save it as a new border Um, 
some sports. Let me see if I have any. Okay, we'll just go with a, a practice shot. Penny and a penny. Here is our We're gonna pretend this is our team photo and our individual photo and we are now going to sample color from her socks. Or let's try from her penny jersey. So th that allows us to sample a color. Sometimes it works. In this case, it's a little bit dark for uh, eight-year-old girl soccer, but uh, you get the idea that you can have, and these borders can have those colors updated as well. The text down here can have um, that uh, the text uh, uh, update with a this color effect option. And I have a video that goes in uh, that just a little bit more in depth as well. So we've made it to the end of Darkroom Core Templates 101. For those of you that stuck with me, didn't get too lost, I tried to keep it as simple as possible until the end we just threw caution to the wind. But I appreciate you for sticking with me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Thanks again for watching. Here are a couple of videos that YouTube thinks that you might enjoy. Be sure to like, subscribe, but more importantly, if there's something you want to learn a little bit more about, comment below this video and I'll do my best to add it as a future video. I'll see you in the next one.